Serious Sam is a game series, and I know what you're thinking. Where's Pro Serious Sam, Sivvy? I'm not a pro at Serious Sam. I tell you guys all about it, but I usually play on normal because I don't actually enjoy my games being frustrating and a pain in the ass, and Serious Sam, well, loves being that. All over, a lot of the time. And I could go through every single Serious Sam game individually, I mean... And you will. How's that? Give him the list. Serious Sam, the first encounter. Serious Sam, the second encounter. Serious Sam 2. Serious Sam 3. The upcoming Serious Sam 4, Planet Badass. Oh, you don't know, do ya? My memory banks are stored with the entire Steam library. Those aren't even a list of the Serious Sam games I own. Let's count them down. Serious Sam Classic, the first encounter. Serious Sam Classic, the second encounter. Serious Sam 2, Serious Sam 3, BFE, Serious Sam HD The First Encounter, Serious Sam HD The Second Encounter, Serious Sam Random Encounter, Serious Sam Double D, Serious Sam Classics Revolution, Serious Sam Next Encounter, Serious Sam Advance, Serious Sam VR First Encounter, Second Encounter, Last Hope, and BFE, Serious Sam Kamikaze Attack, Serious Sam's Bogus Detour, and there's one called Serious Sam Tormental that just entered early access that I've never even heard of when I was searching for the fucking Serious Sam games for this gag in this video. But I don't want to talk about all those games. I don't even want to talk about Serious Sam at all because I don't think it would make for an interesting video to dissect Serious Sam. Because while I enjoy some Serious Sam from time to time, most of these games are designed to test my fucking patience. That's why I play them on normal. I'm gonna go through the big three main entries in the series using first and second encounter HD Serious Sam 2, which, believe it or not, isn't second encounter, but it's its own game, which came out in 2005, because when I asked people, hey, you played Serious Sam 2, they're like, yeah, I played that, it was the one in, like, South America, and then Babylon, and then Medieval Times, with that giant castle battle at the end, right? And I'm like, no, no it's not. But we'll get to that. And Serious Sam 3 BFE, which stands for Before First Encounter, and you'll see why. You'll all see why. So let's start at the beginning. As in, there's a canon to these games. Uh, get it, canon. About a really tough Duke Nukem-like dude named Sam Sirius Stone, who is the best at killing aliens, and so he got sent back in time at the end of Sirius Sam 3, which hadn't happened at first encounter, so that's left unexplained at the beginning of... But... To explain Sirius Sam's mechanics would be redundant a lot of the time, because it's such standard FPS stuff. Guns, monsters, rooms, shoot, move, continue. Sam is aided by a neural interface called Natrixa, which catalogs his weapons and objectives and enemies and leaves these little message notifications at the bottom of the screen that piss me off. We're gonna call her Nettie. Basically, Serious Sam is a horde shooter. It's not the return of classic FPS design, because it's... It's just not, even if half the weapons are basically Doom and Quake guns. Like the shotgun, the super shotgun, the chain gun, the rocket launcher, the obligatory energy weapon that has projectiles that do more damage than the chain gun, but you have to factor in travel time, and the grenade launcher, and then the BFG of the game, the cannon, which shoots a bigger projectile that explodes and can bowl through enemies. The cannon makes its return in Serious Sam 2 with all these dials and shit on it, and it's really shiny. Virtually unchanged from Serious Sam 1, which is good. The cannon is a standout weapon in the series, as iconic as the guns get in these games. I mean, what else is there? Yeah, I guess the minigun too. Whenever you get the minigun in a Serious Sam game, you know shit's about to go down. My favorite weapon personally is the laser gun, which is in first and second encounter, and in two it's basically absent and replaced with a plasma gun, which I guess is a bit more like Quake 3's plasma gun than Doom's. And that game, that game's weapons are a whole other can of worms. Anyway, what I can say about Serious Sam First Encounter is that it's a fine demonstration to Crow Team's Serious Engine, which was very pretty for the time. This here is Serious Sam HD, so it's harder to judge. I mean, shooters had moved away from having tons of enemies on screen around the time of Quake, because, you know, 3D graphics is a lot harder on the system than sprites, so this was a big leap. This is an interview I dug up. I remember reading it a really long time ago. It's from Old Man Murray. You guys remember Old Man Murray? There was this interview with Roman Rabaric, the head honcho over at Crow Team. I've been looking at this article for weeks. What the fuck is some enlightening stuff here? Like, did you know that Ion Storm has a bigger staff than that devoted to brushing John Romero's hair? Bullshit, that man's mane is a sign of virility and people who live in houses designed like big boxes connected by bare hallways shouldn't throw stones. Follow up, to what do you attribute the fact that the Serious Sam Alpha test version 0.06 is clearly a thousand times better than Daikatana? This was like a year before Daikatana came out. First, Everything is bright, sunny, big, and beautiful. Second, chipping loads of enemies at the same time gives even more decoration to this environment. And third, frantic action feeling. 
So Serious Sam comes out in 2001 and takes the budget game world by storm by ignoring everything Half-Life did. Basic design of a Serious Sam game, you have arenas and those arenas are connected and sometimes you can go through them and sometimes you have to kill everything before you can leave or collect four scarabs or collect four bananas or collect- glug, Wait, glug, eight, eight fucking Damn, gas canisters? Like some more. So let's get in our big time travel condoms and sort this whole Serious Sam thing out. Where am I? CV-11, as Uncle has now been captured, there is no reason not to send you back to Unfortunately, you were responsible for damaging government property. Uh-huh. I'm just gonna try adjust your cell point settings real quick, buddy, okay? Oh. Oh. Hey man, that was just Bance. It's cool. We're cool. I choke you a little while you sleep. I have been sounding different. Uber modem? Yeah, we're not doing that. That's not happening without a time machine. I mean, do you guys have a time machine? Serious Sam's level design is what sets it apart from something like Doom, because where Doom could be complex or even as... Oh, should I do it? Do it. Yeah, okay. Doom's level design could be... Dead simple? ha <laughs> So your normal Serious Sam level in First Encounter is like this. Big arena, hallway, big arena, and a couple levels have smaller locations inside. But that's not what the game is about. It's about being fucking huge and over the top. It passes that test with flying colors. It has more in common with something like Smash TV in terms of gameplay than it does with Doom or Quake or Duke Nukem. Which is why I've always been baffled by the comparison to classic FPS. And in Second Encounter, the levels were a little more varied, where you had traps and certain areas that had like jump pads and messed with gravity. Some people say that the gameplay of Serious Sam is press S and hold down mouse 1, which is sometimes true. It has some movement and you have to dodge, but a lot of that is still walking backwards. And the designers knew this because Serious Sam, more than it is a game, is a spectacle. To see how fucking ridiculous it can get. Culminating in Serious Sam 2. I want to get the basics of Serious Sam 1 out of the way first though. Serious Sam 2 is a fucking insane, drug-fueled fever dream that Crow Team probably worked really hard on and spent a lot of time developing. Hi, Sam. No, no, don't look around. It's me, Nettie. Nettie? Natrixa. But Nettie to my friends. Natrissa! Nettie! You can talk! Yes, it's a bit complicated. Let's just say that it has something to do with having a bigger game budget. What game budget? Okay, so you got your arenas right, your hallways, but it's different. See, for one, it's gotten a hell of a graphical upgrade from Serious Sam 1. It's bright and clean and shiny and like a cartoon, even Sam looks different. Look at him on the cover of Serious Sam 1 and then on 2. And the tone of Serious Sam 2 is kind of like in the first game, but amplified. Also, this game has a physics engine. It's not a great physics engine, and when you stack boxes to platform on, it's nearly goddamn impossible to keep them in the place you want because nothing really has any weight to it. You're not going to see 20 seesaw puzzles. It's like... And the platforming in this game is awkward as fuck, right? Because the environments are a lot more detailed, I guess, but you slip around like when you jump in this game, and then you land, it's like your knees bend, but then you jump again before they're done, so it looks like you're double jumping, but in a really shitty way that sucks. <laughs> Serious Sam 2 is slightly different with the arsenal, like, you get an auto shotgun to start with, which is this giant, unwieldy thing that rotates. Guess it's better than Serious Sam 1 shotgun, which fucks with me so hard. Even in the HD remaster, that pump doesn't go anywhere. Why? <laughs> and then in Serious Sam 2, instead of a Tommy gun, you get dual Uzis, like in Next Encounter, the console one. And they eject three bullet casings instead of one. What the fuck? The minigun is... the same. Uh, the Klodovic is a parrot with a bomb on it that flies kinda slow but homes in and can be really useful for the 10,000 fucking flying enemies in this game. Cause there's 10,000 flying enemies, including robots, whatever the fuck these things are, witches, and harpies. Harpies don't change much between the games, except... They have tits now! Hey baby, was your daddy a pilot? Because you are really... Freaking ugly!
And I don't want Katie to spend all day putting black boxes over them. At least not this time. YouTube doesn't care if they're hideously ugly. It's verboten if somebody can crank to it. This absolute unit of a super shotgun. I love it. The old one was kind of boring, but this one's just ridiculous. I miss the old shotgun. Serious Sam's enemy roster is kind of small starting out, which leads to it getting repetitive. In first encounter, you got your headless enemies, uh, regular ones, grenade ones who explode when they die, the ones that shoot a few projectiles you have to jump over, and the kamikazes, you know, the kamikazes. Ah, put a sock in it. The kamikazes are exactly the same in Serious Sam 1 and 3, but in 2, they're like... What? And also you've got Nars, which aren't even an enemy in 2. They're just around doing stuff. Five million clear dramas? It's a ripoff! I think I need to have a little chat with the clerk. Look, I don't have that kind of money. Dan, you can go back! Hurry up! But... I'm here to free the universe from mental. Hurry up, man! Yeah, just a second! Sorry, no can do! I really don't have time for this, so... <laughs> raise the ramp and hand over the cash, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> that felt good. And they come back in three, but in first encounter there are three types of them. And there's the little ones, the floating head ones, and the standard ones that'll be around forever. Then you got the werebulls. The werebulls kind of simulate fighting bulls, as you'd expect. You shoot and then dodge, and they turn, rush you again, you finish them off. They're wind-up toy rhinos. So the bullfighting is against rhinos. Uh, you got your little reptiloids with homing projectiles and your big reptiloids with homing projectiles. You've got your little robots with lasers and the big ones with rocket launchers that you meet in the first level in this secret that's... Okay, when Serious Sam is dull and shitty and dickish, it's like this. This could be the first secret you ever find in the game, and it spawns five of these things, and there's a fair number of projectiles in Serious Sam that you can shoot down, like these rockets. And if you're armed with pistols, that sucks. So go get the secret rocket launcher and you'll be set. Yeah, first area secrets like this telephone booth. Hello? Blondie, is it you? No, it don't. Ah, when will he come? He will come when he's done, boy. Done with what? Uh, I've been waiting forever for him to show up. This came out nine years before Duke Nukem Forever. But he must be the one. You said the same thing for that blondie guy a few years ago, and look what happened. Oh, him! But it took him forever to even try! This came out six years before Duke Nukem Forever. So the story of Serious Sam 2 is that you're Serious Sam, fresh off of shooting up four different areas of ancient Earth, and so these aliens, who are aliens but also Serious Sam fanboys, so they want you to collect five pieces of a medallion from five different worlds, and it'll magically help kill mental, I guess, but it doesn't. Spoiler alert, it fucking doesn't. Simple, right? You gotta go to tribal land, giant land, completely inoffensive stereotype land, clear planet, Elvis land, and then another moon, and then Sirius, the planet. Sirius Sam 2 is the longest game ever created. It's an endurance test. It's also insane. Sirius Sam 3 is an endurance test. It's also boring and has terrible ideas. So Sirius Sam 3 starts off really slow, giving you some new toys like the sledgehammer, and you can do melee kills now, sort of like Doom 2016's glory kills, except you still get damaged while you do them. The camera is fucking weird, and you pick up a piece of a monster and you can throw it, awkwardly and not always with any acceptable degree of accuracy, 
Why? Why? This doesn't serve any practical gameplay purpose. It's not like you get health back from it. You might do it for one level and then you'll just give up because it's pointless. Except for like a quick kill on the medium-sized spider enemies or the smaller enemies if you want to throw up. <laughs> There's invisible walls everywhere to keep you from jumping into places you're not supposed to be. And there's invisible walls everywhere to keep you from jumping to where you're not supposed to be and also to keep you from falling off cliffs. But not all the time. You get a chainsaw for melee attacks, but it's a circular saw now. I mean, that's fine. I don't care. It's not a terrible melee weapon as proven by Doom and Serious Sam 2. I mean, second encounter. This is Serious Sam 2 and first encounter. And the melee attacks, sometimes if you're holding a weapon, you just kick the enemy, but not all the time, because you can crack this dude's neck, but you kick these guys, but you always take a clear's head, which is a gamble anyway, and... But, uh... I don't know. I don't like this. It wastes time and leaves you open to attack, and it doesn't give you health like in Doom 2016, and don't fucking tell me it's some new thing invented for Serious Sam 3 because Duke Nukem Forever had executions too, and they gave you health back. If Duke Nukem Forever had it, then it was probably in another game made before 2008. And you know what else? This leash is a fucking pain to use, and if it were more useful or like you could use it in conjunction with other weapons, it wouldn't be such a problem. But you have to select it, and you can switch weapons fast, but it's not like in Bulletstorm where you could pull stuff around, because even though Serious Sam 2 had a physics engine where you could move objects around, Serious Sam 3 doesn't have that. It has, you gotta wait, as in wait a not insignificant amount of time for this thing to charge up during a Serious Sam firefight. And I don't see the point other than to throw it in because it's kind of a cool idea. It's not Serious Sam's idea, and while I'm at it, neither is this thing that's obviously a mancubus or this thing that's obviously a bear and a hell. I say that shit's a ripoff and I do a YouTube review show. There's a million different enemies in Serious Sam 2 because Crow Team got a budget and they tried really hard to make some kind of weird AAA Serious Sam game with cutscenes and... This bird ah! will train, but help you. What? I see we'll get along just fine. That's not bird poop. These cutscenes, there's one before and one after every single map. And a bunch of them are just like one joke or one thing that's trying to be a joke. Lift boy, let's get out of here. I smell an ambush. Oh god, how could I forget the electrofish? My second least favorite enemy in the first game, because they just spawn in the water, right? They're found the most in uh, the sewer level. Oh, fuck me dry. There ain't no games without sewer levels. Just because you say it doesn't mean it's not bad. Serious Sam 2 is a lot more self-referential because there's more cutscenes, and I have most of them recorded, but at a certain point I started skipping them because nothing is important ever for any reason, so... <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Come on! Whatever. Time machine or no, Bravo's out there alone. We get in there, we recon Bravo, we go home. If everything goes tits up, the professor is our top priority. Are we clear? You're flying into war-torn Cairo and it's brown and gritty and everything blends together and everything is really colorful. You can clearly see enemies and things in the environment. It's really slow and you're going around these copied and pasted environments like copied and pasted a hundred times and everything looks the same. I got lost a lot in Serious Sam 3, despite the fact that it's mostly pretty linear. And you're looking for secrets, like secrets in Serious Sam 3 are hidden in the sense that they're behind walls and bullshit platforming sections, and they don't really lend themselves to this kind of game. You can pick up this armor in level 1 if you're willing to try and understand how to jump all over these janky ledges and figure out what does and doesn't have collision detection. And the same thing in level 4, you can get the cannon in this secret here and you can pick it up but nothing happens. I'm kind of surprised because in Serious Sam games, especially in... Picking up major objects, and even minor bullshit objects, 
like a single health point, spawns monsters just to be a dick. I need to explain, like, the designers are being dicks, or maybe just throwing enemies at you for the spectacle, without really considering how frustrating it makes the gameplay. Which brings us to Clear Alley. Fuck Clear Alley. And don't tell me to jump over the pit of spikes, that's not the intended way to do this, and don't just say I suck, cause here's me doing it on the second try. It's just a slog to get through, and you know the designers thought, let's throw a ridiculous number of enemies at them and make them deal with it, because that's serious. Listen, hardcore Sam fans, I'm not judging you. I don't care if you like Serious Sam a ton. It's not my favorite series ever, but I've had fun with it before. It's not perfect, and as the series goes forward, it has some serious fucking problems. You said you wanted to do this. It was your idea to do a Serious Sam video, to shut up everybody asking for Pro Serious Sam. I don't think I said it like that. You called all your fans weird man-children with starchy body pillows that could cut glass. That does sound like me. Let's talk about the frustration factor of Serious Sam. It's a game that requires a certain amount of skill to play up until higher difficulties, and then it's just sadistic bullshit. First encounter is probably more frustrating than second encounter. I mean, this is just trolling. These things are marsh hoppers, and you can kill them with one hit. So the game traps you in a room, and then fucking hundreds of them pour in. They get a boss health meter. You use your Tommy gun, usually, or I had a minigun I found in a secret that I used a little, sure. But in the next room, they lock you in a hallway with the rocket launching thing, and after you kill those, a single marsh hopper appears. Like as a joke, right? Most sane people will have a point during a Serious Sam game where they say, Okay, that's enough. Because the game is deliberately going too over the top. It wouldn't be Serious Sam otherwise. Crow Team understood this and didn't want their games to be frustrating, you know? So people would buy them. Or so I theorize from the design of these games. Second Encounter introduced some much needed quality of life improvements. This sniper rifle so you don't have to rely on the rocket launcher for hitting faraway enemies. And also the Serious Bomb to clear the screen like in one of them old arcade type games. <laughs> Serious Sam 2 continued this trend with subtle but noticeable differences that people hated, I guess. Most of the monsters are less bullet spongy, the clear skeletons have less health and are more reliably killed by a single blast from the double-barreled shotgun. Hell, on the easier difficulties in Serious Sam 2, they go down with a single blast from the auto shotgun, and the feedback from death in 2 is, well, everything explodes into all the colors of the rainbow. Ooh, baby. There's more enemies in 2. Lots more. And the sheer number sometimes, like, Serious Sam 2 goes so far that I can't think of a way to top it, and I don't think Crow Team could either. Oh, okay, good luck. Serious Sam 3 is like a franchise going back in time to watch itself die. It's a prequel, just like the upcoming Serious Sam 4 Planet Badass. And they add more things to frustrate you, like reloading. Reloading. Don't start with me and say, but Simmy, the pistols in Serious Sam reloaded and so did the double barrel. That's a bullshit argument and you know it. Reloading is a chore in 3, even if the assault rifle holds 50 bullets, or the Devastator holds 25 and the shotgun holds 15 for some goddamn reason. And what are those things on the side for? Holding shells? When the shotgun is loaded with a magazine? What the fuck? The rocket launcher is exactly the same, so why is there reloading? It has no place here. Another thing in Serious Sam 2 that I love, like, legitimately love, is the grenades. Toss a grenade, a dedicated grenade button. Very cool. It has kind of an awkward arc at first, and it seems to come out of Sam's mouth, but it's endlessly useful. So since grenade buttons became standard in games, let's just fucking toss that out for three, and let's toss out the bigger, more open environments and nature settings that we tried in Second Encounter and 2, and go back to the fucking desert. It's like the developers were pressing ass. There's tombs in 3, where you get a flashlight and have to deal with these fucking monkey things. I 
I have never hated anything in a serious Sam game more than these fucking monkeys and the arbitrary dark shitty tomb areas in 3. They stop the game dead. They slow the player down. I mean, like, the player goes slower inside the dark areas. Why would you even think to do that? The dark areas exist to add some variety to the gameplay. You know how 2 did that? Vehicles? They weren't bad. Turret sections? which were usually kind of bad, but it was 2005, I just- I don't get it. I don't get why they would fuck up a problem they already solved. Maybe they couldn't do vehicles again in their fancy new engine. Can't even play two in Serious Sam Fusion. It's like they want to forget it even happened, even though it fixed half of all the problems the gameplay and the other Sam games had. Like the walk backwards pressing S and firing stuff was even mitigated by actual level design, where you could progress. Serious Sam 2 seems like it's more about pushing forward through the hordes, through the levels, than it is about being driven back by them. But in 3, it's just Serious Sam 1 with a coat of dust, sand, and some assets recycled from a modern military shooter they wanted to make. Before Serious Sam 3 was announced, Crow Team was under contract to make a modern military shooter type game. Then the investors dropped out. Here are some screenshots. These look familiar to you guys at all? It's not like Crow Team isn't talented, but come the fuck on, look at this! This is dull looking and messy and weird and just awkward and the light is blinding my eyes like- Okay, let me turn off the bloom. Look, man, I don't even hate Serious Sam, but I feel like it would be disingenuous to ignore certain problems. It keeps spawning these arachnoid scorpions, and I don't feel like looking up the name. I don't even look at Natrix, I don't need to. It's Serious Sam, it's simple. Anyway, hit scanners. Serious Sam 1 has a couple hit scan enemies, both of them are these things, and fuck them, I hate them. In Second Encounter, you get a sniper rifle that one-shots the smaller ones, you know, so it's not as frustrating, and in Serious Sam 2, the number of hit scanners is drastically decreased. There's like two in the entire enemy roster, and they show up only a few times during the 300-hour campaign. You got yourself a hit-scan helicopter, hit-scan soldiers, hit-scan shotgun soldiers, giant hit-scan scorpions again. The worst is the little hit-scan scorpions. Most of the time you won't even hear them coming. You just hear this sound. It's like a shower of bullets they're firing at you. They're fucking everywhere. And they know that the hit scan scorpions are obnoxious and total bullshit. They know. And you're like, Sivvy, you can't read the devs' minds. Yes, I can. Okay, no, I can't. There's special DRM in Serious Sam 3. If you pirate the game, you get followed around by an invincible mini version of the big red scorpion hit scanning bastard, which I would show you with my own footage, but I didn't pirate the game. So here's what that looks like. Don't tell me they didn't know how annoying this was. So this yellow arachnid bug thing has a projectile attack, like you can dodge it. It's fast, but you can dodge it. So there are some subtle changes to the basic gameplay loop between games, like 1 and 3 are actually pretty similar, except the dust. The dust. Serious Sam 3's particle effect system, or whatever is producing all this dust and smoke and shit, even when I turn that down, it's still blinding and prevents you from being able to see shit but only when there's explosions, mostly. It's a good thing you don't use explosives much in a Serious Sam game, or that one of the most common enemies in the entire series that shows up in hordes from the first fucking level in most cases FUCKING EXPLODES! Check this out, because the AI is kinda garbage in Serious Sam 3 and the pathfinding is all messed up. I got this clear stuck on the environment and I can just kinda show you how this works. You can see all the dust he's kicking up, right? His walk cycle's actually going a little fast right here. So it's a little more dust than normal. Honestly, a quarter of that much dust is too much. I thought this was kind of rare, but then it happened again, like, ten minutes later. But then there's these clowns. But then there's these clowns. 
which are like kamikazes, but not because they're a little stronger and they laugh instead of screaming. So they should probably be the mascot of this show. They tried to make the enemies more varied in Serious Sam 2, but okay, but this and this are the same, and these and these are basically the same, except the footballers. They throw these at you. They're kind of like grenades. I really don't like the footballers. I don't. Oh god, that is bad. Serious Sam 2 has a live system. There's still a score counter in these games, like you want to get a high score, you want to show all the kids at school how good you are at Serious Sam? The live system is another anti-frustration feature, because sometimes you'll die and the game will respawn you after the battle you're in, so you'll magically end up on the other side or at the next wave of enemies, like not in boss fights, you can't skip boss fights. Most of those aren't too bad, except, okay, so you're in a world of Elvis people. Don't ask me why. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that Sam bangs one of them, which he deserves after saving the Earth so many. It occurs to me that Sam has not actually ever saved the Earth. I just don't know what's going on anymore. Serious Sam 2 has a boss where you jump around like this. Oh, fuck off. Why can't that just be text? Yeah, like that. Wait. Oh, no, hold on. Anyway, Cecil the dragon kidnaps the king's daughter. Gross! Apparently, the princess had been kidnapped, and they wanted me to save her. They were also very clear about what would happen if I refused to do it. I decided to take the job. Hell, if the princess looks half as good as her mother, who knows, the day could still have a happy ending, if you know what I mean. Sam Homewrecker Stone. I've come to take the princess. Yes, yes, it was a mistake. By all means, she's yours. You can take her. Holy cow! Uh, I... I changed my mind. You can keep her. She sounds like she has some sinus problems. I know that feel. Maybe you can just get her some surgery. Okay, but why the baby giggles? Why does it matter? If Sam doesn't want to bang her, all he's doing is not cucking this prince, dude. You don't know anything about this girl, and I'm tired of this game body-shaming princesses from Elvis land. People don't like Serious Sam 2. I mean, it is like 72 hours long, but there's parts of it I really like. The addition of vehicles seems like a bad idea at first, because in the first level you get to ride a dinosaur that spits fireballs. Dino is kind of shit and the worst example of a vehicle, and this is the only time he appears in this game. Vehicles let you move faster, and they have onboard weapons with infinite ammo. And they basically control like floaty players, because you can still jump and strafe in them. You get these hovercrafts, you get like a spiked hamster ball that you can roll through enemies, and there's a certain satisfaction in walking a long-ass way for a secret area in this giant map, and then you get a vehicle to shorten the time it takes to get back, and also to totally destroy this village, or this prison camp. Finding vehicles in secrets. It's good, good, it's good, it's a good idea. I hate crates. God damn it, now I have to walk all the way back. This crate thing isn't even explained in the HD remake. In classic Second Encounter, it was this crate bus that the ship you left Earth in in First Encounter crashed into full of these big brain developers here like. Oh god, the sounds they make! Before we begin, I would just like to present to you the short film from the crazy portal of Desolation Algorithms for Mono and TV Ogre's Money and Sucker. I'm sure it won't take more than 4 to 5 hours. Ouch! Oh! 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 Towards the end of the game, you're getting that classic run backwards and shoot thing that Serious Sam does because it throws so many monsters at you, you can't really do anything else because there's no way to take out so many of them so quickly. And it's like I'm running a half mile backwards in this canyon after fighting 500 clears and werebulls, and when I'm finally done with that, it just spawns a bunch more clears because I didn't run forward to this trigger to finish the fight, I- Near the end of the game, I mean in the last 12 or so hours of the game, you get put into this Running Man game show and you have to run forwards to push through the enemies in order to get to the checkpoints. It's the exact opposite of run backwards and shoot, because you have to be able to push through these guys quick. Again, the dedicated grenade button really helps with that. And when you're not running backwards, you have to hold the line and they spawn just way too many of these scorpions. Like, fuck you, I'm getting tossed around and shot in the air. 
I'm forced backwards pressing S and then it's not a fucking wearable with a cannon on its back? What the hell, game? This is the third level. Holy shit. Sam, before you enter the ceremonial arena, find yourself four bananas for good luck. Mm, I love bananas. Bananas good. Where the fuck is the sniper rifle? And don't tell me to use the Devastator, it's not the same. I don't care if there's a fucking paid DLC that gives you a scope for it. There's a sniper rifle in Serious Sam 3, but it's hidden in secrets just like the laser gun. What sick fuck would hide the sniper rifle when it's obvious that- The sniper rifle is a clear quality of life improvement and a smart move by the devs, probably addressing complaints about First Encounter. And after First Encounter, the game's tried to make the bosses more than shoot at it until it dies. And so now you have to ring a gong, or use a ballista, or fight a giant building that's sending waves of kamikaze pilots and bombers after you, that you have to shoot down from a vehicle that you can't exit like the other vehicles? Except that one time that I did... And after an hour shooting through this goddamn canyon where they throw seemingly endless waves of monsters at you. But don't forget, we're a modern shooter now, so we have ammo crates with infinite rockets. You can spam rockets forever, but you gotta make sure to reload that shotgun. Man, I feel like I'm all out assaulting this city. Seriousopolis. Even if the battles themselves in 2 feel shorter, I mean, they are generally shorter, but there's more of them. And you get a better sense of progression because all the maps are generally shorter. You plow through the city center. And I spent so much time just going through this one wave of enemies, refilling my rockets, and then another wave of these spiders shows up, better spam them with rockets. So I catch a bus to the mental institution, which is a bad pun. Fuck that pun, it's awful, I'm sorry, it's just, it's not as awful as the boss itself. I'm in a hovercraft blasted dozens and dozens of tiny spider bot things while towering spider bot things come in. They're huge. Some of the medium tier monsters in Serious Sam 2 are the size of the boss monsters in First and Second Encounter. It starts throwing wearables and clears at me. I could go my entire life without seeing another goddamn clear skeleton after this game. So aside from the wearables and clears, it's tossing these knockoff barons of hell at me, which they then ported to a Serious Sam HD Second Encounter expansion pack, and it's the boss of that? I guess this is fine for the Game Boy Advance. The mental institution is a pain in the ass and I don't care for it. Locking me in the vehicle increases mobility, but I don't know. I don't see the point. I guess you've already gunned down most of the bosses and this is a change of pace. They're going for variety. And these Baron things can only be hurt by explosives and high caliber bullets, right? But I'm already using that stuff because I have infinite rockets, basically. Just being funneled through this canyon, which looks nice. I'm being attacked on all sides. There's monsters coming over the walls. The walls themselves are shifting, changing the arena around me. Two isn't like the first and second encounter where enemies will almost always just teleport in. There's effort put in to make them come from somewhere. And all the enemies, like all of the enemies teleport in with this goddamn awful sound every time at every level. And when you've finally beaten the boss after like 45 minutes of this mental institution level, you get a silly cutscene with an OJ joke. This was nine years after Duke Nukem 3D and six years before Duke Nukem 3D. And when you finally get to the boss, so there's that giant sandworm that's been on the outer edges of the desert map through the whole game to attack the boss so you can jetpack up and throw a metal rod into his back so he gets struck by lightning, because if he doesn't, he keeps regenerating his health. The jetpack, you get a jetpack, but this is the first time you ever see the jetpack in this game, so you're getting introduced to the flying mechanics right now during the final boss and it's weird and awkward to use, there's like an overheat mechanic on the jetpack so you can't just continue to fly. I don't have a problem beating Clear Alley guys, it's just dickish. Here I was born. What the hell? Ah, crap. This is getting serious. Serious talk with Crow Team one of these days. And that's how we do it on planet Earth, you overgrown space cockroach. Hey, maybe it really is like the end. Or, or it's one of Crow Team's bad jokes again. Hey, is your dad home? I'll see you in 3000 BC, Mental. You motherfucker! Here I was born.
Earth is destroyed. Mental is exterminated an unknown amount of the human race. For lulz, I guess. All the weapons reload, and all your friends are dead. Until Serious Sam 4 Planet Badass, where everyone's alive again and you have AI companions. Which you kind of had in Serious Sam 2, so maybe we're going forward again or backwards. I'm... Someone please help me, I don't know what's happening anymore. Don't paint me as a Serious Sam hater. Maybe I'm too old for this. Jesus, that I still have to play through Serious Sam 2, and that's gonna take at least 96 hours. That game is really, really long. Like, Crow Team put all their effort into that game, making a big boy game that could compete with the AAA games that were coming out, but for what is essentially kind of a niche title that they worked so hard on, but then nobody likes Serious Sam 2, so they went backwards, and look, I've still got a lot of work ahead of me on this video, and if I ever make it out, I'll do whatever you want, just... <sighs> uh...